Dideoxy sequencing was developed by Frederick Sanger in 1977 and is based on in vitro DNA synthesis using a mixture of deoxy and dideoxy nucleoside triphosphates. Four reactions are set up, each containing the DNA one wishes to sequence as template and a primer that hybridizes to the template or adjacent vector DNA. Generally, on the order of 10 to the 12 molecules of template and primer are added to each reaction. DNA polymerase is added to catalyze the synthesis of DNA, and deoxynucleoside triphosphates are added as substrates. The ATP is labeled with either the radioisotope S35 or P32 to facilitate visualization of the newly synthesized DNA. One of the four dideoxynucleoside triphosphates is then added to each of the reactions. DNA polymerase binds to the template and catalyzes the addition of the complementary nucleotides to the three prime end of the primer. Addition of a dideoxynucleotide causes termination of DNA synthesis. Since many reactions are occurring in a single tube, a collection of DNA fragments is produced each terminating at a different site. In this tube, dideoxyguanine triphosphate was added, so termination only occurs at sites of guanine addition. This collection has the same 5' prime terminus defined by the primer and a dideoxyguanine at the 3' prime terminus. The samples are loaded on a polyacrylamide gel with each reaction loaded in a separate lane. The lanes are labeled according to which dideoxynucleotide was added to each reaction. Electrophoresis through the gel separates the fragments according to size with the smaller fragments migrating faster through the gel. The gel is then removed from the apparatus and an x-ray film is placed on top. After an overnight exposure, the film is developed and the DNA fragments can be seen as bands on an autoradiogram. Starting from the bottom of the audio radiogram, each band is assigned a base corresponding to the lane that it is in. The sequence is read 5' prime to 3'. Prime. <laughs>